Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today we are redoing a video that I had posted very early on in my YouTube journey. And basically the reason I'm refilming this is that a lot of you guys had let me know in the comments that there were a couple problems with the video. And I really appreciate when you guys comment and I love your feedback and it really helps me grow my channel. But I wanted to redo this video because first and foremost and most problematically, a lot of you said you couldn't hear me in that video. So I wanted to redo it with better sound, but not just repost the first video. So first off, this is the how to dry roses, or at least how I dry roses video. In that video, I just had a couple roses at the time. And this time I have a big, beautiful bouquet of roses. If you'll notice, they are in my painted vase that I just did. And if you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it above, but uh, gorgeous, gorgeous roses. And um, what's great about this bouquet uh, is that they're all multicolored. And what that's gonna do is really give you guys an idea of how the different colors dry. We have white, we have this beautiful kind of fiery peach color, light pink, fuchsia, and that might be it. No deep, deep reds. But other than that, we have a bunch of different roses here as far as colors. And I'm hoping that will give you guys a good idea of just how the different colors dry because those were a couple questions I'd received as well, is what do different colors dry as? And I know deep red roses tend to dry more black, uh, white roses go cream right away, and for the pinks you tend to get the pink color for a while, eventually over a couple years you will lose that and they will fade to that uh, very pale cream color. But today we are doing this bouquet right now it's very fresh and gorgeous so i am going to enjoy it for a few more days until it starts to wilt and that's when the video is going to pick up but i wanted you to see it in its full glory because it's absolutely stunning and to kind of let you know that i am using the vase and the multicolor roses are gorgeous in this vase so i do love that but uh we're going to get into this video a couple days from now when these flowers start wilting i'm going to enjoy them until then and uh i'll see you soon to do that Hey guys, so before we get started on the roses that we are drying today, because sadly my beautiful bouquet is finally starting to wilt, uh, but not all of it, just a couple of them, so I still get it to enjoy a few more days of the beautiful roses, but I'm gonna get started on the ones that are wilting so we can uh, see the different colors and just save them a little bit longer for the future by drying them out. But first, I wanted to give you an update for any of you that have watched the original How to Dry Roses video that this is a video update on. Here is the rose that was dried in that video. So it's been over a year, it's been about a year and two months, and you can see even though the paleness is starting at the bottom, it's still a very vibrant pink kind of mauve color. And it's going to stay this way for probably another couple of years at least, honestly. Like uh, ones I've had in the past took about five years to lose their color. So this is just a good way to keep its color for a long time. It's beautiful. The petals are very brittle. Obviously it's dried, but uh, it keeps its shape. You can hold it down here. It's fine, like it's it's fairly durable. The stem, because it is a rose stem, is very durable. You can see the places that the spikes were, uh, or thorns, I guess, were taken off. They're a little bit paler, but um, I just want to give you an update on that flower and let you know what you can expect over a year in. Also, I want to give you an update since this video is about different colored roses. About the same time I dried that flower, I ended up drying two really deep red roses, and these are them a year later. So this one is probably my favorite just because the bloom is so beautiful, but I did wanna let you know um, just kind of what the different colors look like for the roses. Obviously a pink rose versus a deep red rose. This one did dry a bit darker. It dried almost like a deep crimson or black, but now it's back to that really pretty kind of red. But like I said, the petals are very brittle, so just be careful with that. And these eventually too, I believe, will turn pale in the long, long term. It's starting a little bit on that one, you can see. But I would anticipate it keeping its color for several more years, if not longer. But anyway, that is the update on the previous roses, and let's get into the ones we're drying today. So we're starting off just with a pile of the wilting roses, and what we are going to want to do is to clean off all of the thorns and leaves. This is a personal preference. You can leave the leaves on there, but they just complicate things. They're brittle, they break off. It's a mess. Just go ahead and remove them. 
Next up, you're going to want to suspend your roses upside down. I really like hanging them from magnetic clips on the fridge. This is just super convenient. So that is a personal preference of mine. Hang them upside down however you want. You can tie a string around them, hang them on a hook or a nail, anything like that. But clips on the fridge work really well. I am lucky enough to have a hole in between my fridge and wall. I don't know if it's luck or not. Basically, the fridge doesn't take up the whole area, but it's perfect for drying roses, so I do actually like that space. If you don't have a space like this, you would just want to keep your roses out of direct sunlight and away from heat. So this is the first check-in. It's been three days and the roses are starting to dry out. You can see that the stems have started to straighten because I'm hanging them upside down. That's very important. Get a nice straight rose. The leaves are still squishy. You can see that there's a huge amount of give from my finger. They don't move as a unit and they feel very wet and elasticy. So these are nowhere near dry, but you can see the shape that they are going to adopt when they are dry. And you'll be able to tell when they're dry when the heads stop wobbling. That means there's liquid in there and they move around a bit like a normal rose. Definitely not the stiff stem of a dried rose or the stiff petals. So definitely a good start, but we will want to keep our eye on them until the petals start moving as a crunchy unit. All right, we got another day up and uh, they're looking a little bit crispier. So that's good, but um, that one's more crispy. This one's still quite squishy, which means a lot of moisture is still in it, but they're looking really good. Look at the colors on these. They're gorgeous. And uh, yeah, these are uh, all in all turned out really well so far, but I mean, uh, it's a little early to tell, but I still think they're doing great. Here we go. We have a week and a half update. This one's really cool. The petals are drying back a little bit as it was in a full bloom so it's maintaining that full bloom shape which is gorgeous but you can see that the petals are shriveling a little bit they are definitely getting crunchier they will move as single units now the flower heads are not completely dried out roses are very thick flowers very densely petaled so they do need at least two weeks hanging up give them three if you can but uh, yeah, cool dry space away from heat and out of sunlight, but uh, these are looking good. And the two week update, these are looking fabulous. Still have the fabulous shape. Basically the shape is locked in and it's not gonna move short of breaking off a petal, but you can see that the heads have all shriveled a little bit as the moisture gets sucked out. The petals do kind of shrink just slightly. They pull in on themselves, but the color retention is perfect. So these flowers were fading a little bit in the vase. That's why I decided it was time to dry them. So they will get lighter uh, with time, but as they are now is how they're going to stay for a couple years. You can see that the heads don't wobble at all. It is a very stiff unit from the tip of the stem all the way up to the tip of the flower head. You have to be gentle with the petals at this point because they are more brittle and breakable. But for the most part, uh, these are good to go. You can unclip them and put them in a vase and enjoy your dried flowers for years to come. Okay guys, so it has been a couple weeks since I started the video and have dried my roses. And you might have noticed I have a little bit of a change going on behind me. This is my new backdrop for the channel. I'm so excited for it. I just built it and I have the video linked above and down below in the description if you want to see how I did that because it's super cool. The light panels are amazing and they change colors so they're super super neat. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is the dried roses so we're gonna get on with that. These are the dried roses from the original bouquet that you saw. I didn't dry all of them. Some of them I just wanted to see out for as long as I could, so I just let them kind of uh, wilt in the vase and got every last uh, drop of joy out of them. But for the most part, these are, I think, 13 of them, of the original 24. I did get a couple of the different colors. As I said, here is one of the original pale pink ones. I will do some close-ups at the end, but you can kind of see uh, it's completely dry. There's a fair amount of color left to it, but uh, basically nice straight stem right there, which was achieved by hanging it upside down. We have some of the uh, deep red ones. And like I said, I will do close-ups because I know I'm far away from the camera, but these turned out really well as well. And then my favorite multicolored one, I think was, was it you? Which one was it? It just turned out splendidly. It's this one. So this was one of the peach roses and it just has the most uh, variation of color. It's got like deep red upper petals and then some more of that apricot color down in the um, base of the petals in the bulb. But uh, they turned out beautifully and this is basically how they are going to stay 
until you bump them or rip off the petals or slowly, as I said, the color will fade, but that'll be over the course of several years. So uh, yeah, this is basically it. And I wanted to show you just kind of an updated version of what you get when you dry roses. And you can definitely put them in a vase and display them like this, like a bouquet that never goes bad. And uh, yeah, so that is everything. That's the video. I will do some close-ups at the end, but I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you here again soon. Bye for now. So here is the close-up I was promising you guys. These are the pale pink flowers. You can see that for the most part, they retained their pink color. They did also go a little bit tan. That's to be expected from the lighter blooms. These are the peach flowers. This is the one that I held up in the video. I'm gonna pull it out there for you. As you can see, it does have that variation of colors in the petals. They're beautiful. And being hung upside down meant that it's retained its lovely rose shape. You can see the roses that were more fully opened when they were being dried have a larger shape than the ones that were definitely in the bud stage. And then lastly, we have the deep red roses. Was that? Yeah, that was a deep red one. So this one is a deeper red. It is getting a little bit of brown in there for this one. Uh, this is another example that uh, you are gonna get variation from them. So just be prepared for that. Lovely deep maroon on the petals. And yeah, I think they're uh, lovely and they can just stay in the vase like this for as long as I want them in there. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. Bye for now.